Right now, President Biden is wrapping up his European trip in Switzerland, preparing for a high stakes meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. It follows recent cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure by criminals likely based in Russia. Now, we have been talking a lot about President Biden's first foreign trip. But what does it really mean for us back here in the States? So to break it all down, Jim Lutis, he's the Vice President Strategic Initiatives at Salve Regina University. He joins us now live via Zoom. Jim, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. First off, we know this is the president's first foreign trip since taking office, and he's meeting with a lot of other world leaders. But can you boil down for us why exactly this trip is so important? Well, I think it's important on a couple of different levels. It's important internationally that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, breaks with his immediate predecessor and signals to the world that the United States is back. That's been a refrain that the president has used again and again and again in his presidency. Uh, the United States is rejoining the community of nations and we're eager to play America's traditional role as a guarantor of security uh, in the West and really on a global scale. I think it's important domestically too because a lot of Americans after the last four years uh, maybe have come to believe that those international institutions like NATO, like the G7, like the United Nations uh, aren't really valuable to the United States anymore. But what I think what history has told us time and again is that the United States is stronger when we act in concert with nations who share our values, share our commitment to democratic principles. Uh, and that's what we've seen in the 75 years now since the end of the Second World War. It's organizations like NATO uh, that have undergirded not just American security, but American prosperity as well. And Jim, we have heard that phrase, the president saying America is back. We know NATO and the G7 have some overlapping parties. What was the president's main goal in those meetings? Well, I think that he wanted to, again, affirm that America was going to re-engage with the world. But I also think that on some more strategic issues, he was really interested in re-engaging the world on issues where the United States can lead, particularly when you think about the rise of China in the 21st century. I don't know a single uh, national security analyst or strategist working today who doesn't think that the dominant player in, in global politics in the 21st century is going to be China. Economically, militarily, and even increasingly politically, we see them playing a really outsized role beyond the traditional region of East Asia. And so uh, I think the President of the United States wanted to get from the G7, wanted to get from NATO, a commitment not just to confront uh, uh, Russia, and we can talk about that a little bit coming up till tomorrow, but also to confront the authoritarian impulse from Beijing. Uh, China's engaged in a competition with the West. I don't want to call it a Cold War quite yet, but it's a competition around economics, around uh, politics and military power, but it's also around an, idea, an ideological question, which is how do we best organize society to serve all people? Uh, China has advanced the narrative and advanced the system and a promise that is based on the rule of one political party, the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, what the United States has stood for uh, from its founding is the belief that, the, that it's the people who are the sovereign. It's the people that the government ultimately serves. Uh, and the like-minded democracies in the G7 and in NATO uh, share those values, share those principles. And so what I think that the president principally got from those, from those meetings was a commitment from our partners around the world uh, to confront China uh, where it needs to be confronted and hopefully to inspire a different course for that country uh, as it takes on a, a larger world, a, a larger role in world affairs. And you mentioned Russia. We certainly want to talk about that because there's been a lot of chatter about the president's meeting tomorrow with Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. What are you expecting to come out of that meeting? Well, I think we're going to see some pretty candid uh, uh, exchange. You know, it'll all be behind the scenes. We'll only hear about it later. And it's interesting to note that the two presidents are not going to have a joint news conference afterwards. I think that the, the White House wanted to avoid any sort of uh, 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 kerfuffle as, as in diplomatic terms between the two presidents. But look, I think we're going to see uh, a, a very candid uh, exchange between uh, President Biden and President Putin. But look, the United States uh, faces a real challenge from Russia. Uh, it is beyond a doubt, beyond a doubt that Russia tried to intervene in the American election in 2016 and 2020. Uh, but they've also intervened in elections in the United Kingdom, in France, in Germany, and uh, other countries around the world. Uh, 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 cyber gangs from Russia have attacked America's infrastructure. Uh, the colonial pipeline lockdown uh, just last month, we know, came from uh, a cyber criminal band in Russia. Whether or not it was controlled by the Russian government is still an open question. 
Uh, but we know that Russia has cultivated ties to extremist organizations and extreme countries, Syria uh, for one of them, uh, Iran. And the United States for a long time has looked at Russia as the indispensable interlocutor with regimes like Assad's, with, with regimes like the Iranians. Uh, and I think that we, what we're gonna see from President Biden is an opportunity to say, look, there are things that we might be able to work together on, but you, Russia, are gonna have to behave uh, in keeping with the greatest traditions of sovereignty and international legitimacy uh, if you wanna be taken seriously as a player on the world stage. Salve Regina University's Jim Ludis, thank you so much for your insight today. Thank you for having me.